the president for giving me this opportunity to express how I feel vis a vis this bill. And welcome to the government bench in Anchorage. The bill under scrutiny, which we are going to adopt in a few minutes, had its boundaries to dealing with Saudi Arabia. But because there are pertinent issues that will spring and link up to other things. Other questions may be asked out of the boundary. Mr. Minister, I'm very sure that our relationship with our neighboring countries with respect to how they treat our citizens is not good. And I don't know whether when we sign treaties like this, we it is only Cameroon that has to respect its own end of the call. And when it is disrespected from the other end, we don't know exactly what the government does. We have our boundaries with Chad, Central Africa, Equatorial Guinea, Gabon, Nigeria. I mean, these are the international boundaries. But we also have inlets and outlets that link us up to these countries. <coughs> what I cannot understand is, their compatriots move into this country, stream into this country by some osmosis, and they find themselves settled here. They even help us to cause atrocities. For example, they know so well, you know, that uh, places like Indian, our neighbors stream in there through the rivers, through the sea, to fight. What is it that you can do, or our government can do? to do a check, to do a census also, to know who is a Cameroonian and who is eligible to live in this country. That is, those who have papers that permit them to live here. A few weeks ago at the embassy, a Cameroonian lady was robbed in broad daylight. She took 23 million francs from a Freedland Bank and four arm robbers attacked her. When, as God will have it, two were caught, and on these are Nigerians. I'm not saying that all Nigerians were here doing that. And I'm not saying that the Nigerians that did it <laughs> may not have had papers. But my question is, this census that we are not doing to know our numbers and to know who has to live in this country, who does not have to live in this country, is not helping us. Secondly, each time that a consignment of Cameroonians leave wherever they have been dri brutally driven and they come back, the first cry at the airport is that, life is hard here. But what piqued my attention this last time is that life is even harder in Equatorial Guinea. So if life is harder there and they cannot come back here, then something is wrong. Something is wrong, Mr. Minister, for us to find out how our brothers and sisters who leave this country live elsewhere. Mr. Minister, if a Cameroonian takes our money, and invest in another country and grow it. I employ the government to follow up that person to do reinvestment here. And how will that happen? We have to provide very good environment. We revisit our tax code because there is no reason why giving all the natural resources that we have, the land and every other provision that we have, that somebody who is a Cambodian who prefer to go and invest somewhere in that mighty and huge way that he has lost not only the fortune he has as a person, but we, have, we are losing as a nation. So there is something which is not all right here. It is not normal. So we have to look at that. I am very sure our tax system, which did not favor him here, he was lured by some, some misguidedness, he invested where he did, and they've seen the fortune that he has raised, and it is done on them that if they make way of his money, they will increase their budget, and we will pay the price here. So we have to look at that also very critically. It is not speaking well for our nation, and it is not one person that finds that. We have to fight it as a house. You have to fight it as a minister of external relations. Now, when we meet President Donald Trump was president, there was a cold war between China and America. It was tit for tat. I don't want to go into their diplomacy. But those who know know what America did and how China retaliated. Therefore, tit for tat will not begin only from Cameroon. 
when our people are driven like that, Mr. Minister, we should drive the other people also here. So that they feel it and know what it takes. There are times that you bend the rule, not because you want to, but you want to set precedence so that people should know that you are not a fool. It's not because you are quiet that makes you stupid. And it's not what has happened that is important. It's the lesson we learn out of it. And I think the lesson we are learning out of this situation is that in Canada, the head of state helps people to come home. In China, it does help people to come home. In Equatorial Guinea, it does. In Nigeria, you know, who has helped people from Cameroon to go back home? They are here very quiet, comfortable. We have, we have so much to offer, a lot of food. Our environment is conducive, our climate is fine. They are living here in leisure, and our people are not treated properly. Lastly, Mr. Minister, we see all kinds of posters. People want to have jobs. Pass through me and I will have a job in Qatar. You will have a job in Saudi Arabia. Mr. Minister, when these people start crying that they are maltreated there, have you ever sought to find out how they got there? And what did you do to the people who helped them to get there? I think I would like you to put your feet on the ground so that all these amateurs that help people to travel abroad for practically no reason, and they end up having so much trouble, and the burden is on our government, something drastic should be done so that we know who is who and the right things to be done. Thank you very much for your subsequent responses. Madam Kenji, Emilia. Madam Kenji, Emilia, je me veux beaucoup de problèmes qui sont des problèmes de patriotisme, si je peux dire ça comme ça. À la République, notre pays a des frontières avec un certain nombre de pays voisins dans la sous-région. Elle constate que ces pays ont des milliards de administration euh, qui sont concernés pour la question des séjours et l'immigration des étrangers dans notre pays que vous connaissez. Ces administrations travaillent euh, arduement pour préserver euh, l'entrée de notre pays selon les règles en vigueur et des textes qui sont euh, ainsi édictés par la théorie hiérarchique. Je voudrais l'assurer que de ce point de vue, euh, un travail important est fait par ces différentes les administrations. Mais elle, est, elle a été ensuite assez, euh, assez demanderesse euh, en disant si nos compatriotes sont malmenés ailleurs alors que nous, on, on essaie d'être hospitaliers, il n'y a-t-il pas possibilité de faire aussi euh, une réaction réciproque À ce niveau, elle a cité le cas euh, emblématique entre les pays de grande puissance, comme on les appelle, s'agissant du cas des États-Unis et de la Chine. Elle a dit qu'il y a eu des mesures de rétention quand les deux pays étaient en contention commerciale et internationale. Elle estime donc que euh, parfois, il faudrait que nous puissions euh, réagir. Madame euh, la sénatrice a également dit qu'elle note qu'il y a la multiplication des posters de publicité euh, qui amènent nos compatriotes à être euh, séduits pour pouvoir aller dans ces pays où euh, il y a une publicité d'attraction, mais qu'il faudrait que le Cameroun soit vigilant pour euh, traiter le problème des passeurs. C'est la même qui trompe nos compatriotes pour leur faire miroiter un meilleur avenir à l'extérieur en leur euh, promettant euh, de payer des moyens de régression qui doivent leur permettre d'aller dans ces pays qu'ils considèrent comme eux, les êtres du Rado. L'honorable la, la, sénatrice a dit que nous devons également regarder la question qui concerne fortement l'évaluation de nos relations avec la plupart des pays pour que nous puissions prendre des mesures appropriées qui sont des mesures euh, actuelles actualiser, si je puis dire, pour mieux protéger nos compatriotes. Elle a souligné un autre problème, 
Bon, c'est pas moi qui pourrais y répondre d'une manière ou d'une autre. Elle a dit, si nos compatriotes vont vers d'autres zones où ils sont menacés et continuent d'aller, alors qu'à l'intérieur de ce pays, il y a un environnement des affaires qui peut leur permettre de se parler. Il y a lieu de s'en inquiéter. Pourquoi est-ce qu'ils vont alors qu'à l'intérieur même du pays, il y a un coup de investissement, il y a des moyens qui sont mis en place, il y a une réglementation qui permet aux uns et aux autres de pouvoir évoluer dans le cadre de l'État. Pourquoi est-ce que les gens vont, malgré toutes les humiliations qu'ils ont fait, malgré toutes les difficultés et les tribulations, il y a des nécessités pour le Cameroun de pouvoir évaluer et de voir cette situation pour voir comment on peut y apporter une solution. Monsieur le Président, c'est ce que je veux avoir dit euh, de tout ce que nos euh, honorables sénateurs ont pu nous poser comme euh, question. Nous restons toujours à la disposition. Si nous n'avons pas pu apporter une réponse euh, la plus précise à certains questionnements, nous pouvons euh, revoir notre, notre euh, narratif à ce sujet. Et je vous remercie.